will need the following items to get started. A set of one-sided e-hogus of each color, blue and red. E-headgear, blue and red. Sets of transmitters for both body and head. Software stick containing the most recent version of the ring management software. Judge boxes, one receiver, and Gen 2 e-foot gear. First, let's take a look at the receiver. You'll see a rotary switch. All electronics as well as transmitters and judge boxes will also have this rotary switch and must operate on the same channel setting. You can use either tweezers or a precision flathead screwdriver to assign a group of radios through channels 0 through 9 and A through F. Go ahead and plug your cable to the receiver and connect to the computer. Before installation, you'll need to install the driver for the receiver. Right-click the Windows icon on the bottom left corner of the screen and click Device Manager. Open the drop-down menu for ports otherwise known as COM and LPT. You should see a USB serial device that requires a driver update. Browse and allow your computer to search for the folder containing the driver. Click Next and allow the driver to proceed with its update. Immediately continue with the installation for the ring management software. Follow the installation wizard and allow time to load the software. At this point, you may restart your computer and ensure everything has been successfully installed. You will have two different sets of transmitters, four in total, two for the body, red and blue, and two for the head. These are dip switches and switch two will assign either red or blue for body and head transmitters. To change the player light from red to blue, use a tool and flip the switch based on the diagram shown. Then recycle the power by turning it off, then turning it back on. You will see the color change on the player light as well as the comm lights re-establishing communication. For the diagram on the judge boxes, all of the dip switches in the on position will have the color red for judge 1. Dip switch 5 in the off position will have the color green for judge 2. And dip switch 6 in the off position will have the color blue for judge 3. For this next step, you'll need to enter the ID numbers labeled on the transmitters and judge boxes. With the software already open, go to Configurations and enter the IDs in the appropriate fields. Once you are done, click connect and this should take less than a minute to sync up. If it's taking longer, please check the rotary switch among all of the electronics and make sure the IDs are matching with what was entered into the software. You should also see the calm lights change from solid lights to blinking lights. At this point, you can connect your transmitters to the e-hokus and e-headgears. You'll see a confirmation on the screen that the physical connection was successful. Go to match slash ring manager and click new match wizard. For training purposes, you could follow this setup. However, in order to train with the correct threshold settings, you'll need to select the correct division, gender, and weight class for each match. For competition, specifically sanctioned events, Match numbers and players must be entered. This information will be stored into the system to expedite match wizard settings for subsequent matches. To make sure everything is functioning properly, start a hardware test. The button layouts for the judge boxes are as follows for each color. Head, technical or spin, and punch. Make sure the inputs on the screen correspond with the button pressed. For the athlete hardware test, allow each side to have a test kick. One to the body, and one to the headgear. You are now ready to start the match. 
For computer operators, here are some quick short keys to use during the match. Enter to start every round of a match. Spacebar pauses and resumes in the match. Pressing R will give you gum jumps for red. Pressing B will give you gum jumps for blue. To make certain changes to your round in progress, go to scoreboard. To add or remove time or change a round, select your round and choose apply, then change and set your time. Click apply new score and resume the match. In the event of a Keshi or a medical timeout, you will find the button on the right hand corner of the screen, followed by the doctor button to show that they are currently on the field. A one minute timer is set to check on the player. The match will resume depending if the player can continue. At the end of the match, the operator and judges must declare the winner. Judges must confirm what the results shown on the screen. Who won the match and what was the result of said match. In the event of a last minute change, you will find your scoreboard, options for video replay, and match log located under your final results menu. In the event that a coach raises a challenge card at the last possible second, but the round prematurely ends, judges are still able to call for a video replay in the final results menu. Scoreboard also serves for the same purpose and will allow you to either add or remove points or add time to the clock. To clarify any discrepancies, you are able to view the match log for a list of details and inputs that were collected throughout the match. Once confirm is clicked, any options for the current match will be grayed out and that match is over. To create a new match under different categories, click New Match Wizard to enter new information. You can use Existent Match and Last Started Match if you want to either replay one of the earlier matches or the last match that just occurred. In the event that the match has ended prematurely and you cannot select the scoreboard or any other option, Restore Last Match will recreate the last possible conditions of the last match, allowing you to resume and complete the round.